Hey everyone, welcome to Coffee with Joe for Friday, December 11th, 2009. Joe, let's talk a little bit about um, what the landscape looks like after the passage of the reforms that we advocate at economicstability.org and that are in the American Monetary Act, put together by the American Monetary Institute, which is actually going to be uh, introduced into Congress very soon by Congressman Dennis Kucinich under the name American Monetary and Financial Security Act. Now, uh, one thing that monetary reformers, uh, Ron Paul is one of the uh, most prominent uh, promoters of this idea, is that we need to end the Fed. The American Monetary Act actually doesn't end the Fed or ban the Fed. It incorporates it into the U.S. Treasury. Does that solve <laughs> the problem, Joe? Does that solve the problem? Well, Pete, you know, it doesn't solve the problem for Ron Paul, okay? It solves the problem for us. And, you know, uh, the, idea of, the idea of ending the Fed on our part is ending the private creation of money, okay? And fractional reserve, uh, fractional reserve using fractional reserve uh, uh, banking system of the Fed, okay, the debt money system. Um, and uh, so, so yeah. As far as we're concerned, it does it does uh, so solve the problem. But does it really end the Fed? Well, um, it would it would it would end the Federal Reserve banks, the real Federal Reserve banks as we know them, Pete, because those banks, the functions of those banks, would be incorporated into the Treasury. Joe, and, help me out here. We've got the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve banks. Could you explain the difference? Well, the whole Federal Reserve system is, is primarily made up of three components, Pete, which is the Board of Governors, which is in Washington, uh, the regional banks, of which, of which there are 12 regional banks, right? And the main one is the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, but there are, uh, you know, various cities in the country. Dallas, and Kansas then City, Atlanta. Yeah, there are, and then there are the member banks, Pete, the member banks that are part of each regional bank, okay, basically all the banks that are under the jurisdiction of the Fed are the member banks that are part of the system. So we're talking here about, when we talk about incorporating, we're basically talking about, you know, taking the capital stock and the balance sheets of the regional Federal Reserve banks uh, and and incorporating them into a, you know, a sub part of the Treasury and, and, uh, and taking the other parts of the of the uh, uh, the mother fed I like to call it you know uh, the, the workings of the Federal Open Market Committee and the Board of Governors right into the Treasury now acting how through through in the case of the Open Market Committee because all the the main function of the Open Market Committee is to set uh, the federal funds rate which sets the base rate for interest rates throughout the economy Okay, throughout throughout the financial system, which is supposed and, to be how they govern the money supply, is that right? Yes, That's that the main governor on the money supply, right? Right. Is and why are they why are they governing the money supply to maintain price stability, Pete? Okay, that's that's why they're they're looking at the money, they're looking at the the uh, the overall economy and prices, and we it's kind of one of the unfortunate things that they only look at price stability because price is usually consumer price. It's, uh, it's what they're measuring, and, and that's an off-screen thing because there's asset prices, there are commodity prices, there are all kinds of, of, uh, of, uh, of measures of, of, uh, of price that get hidden off-screen when you only function on the uh, consumer price. So, so we talk about prices primarily related to you know, consumer price basket of goods. But that monetary function, Pete, of, the open, of, of, of setting the monetary target and achieving the monetary target Yes, would be would be absorbed into the treasury, would be absorbed be absorbed into the federal monetary authority. The federal monetary authority would have the ability to look at the same things that the open market committee looks at, and and we have the function of setting the target. And now, the difference, Pete, is that the achieving of the monetary target is going to be a direct managed. Uh, re, uh, result, okay? Because why? 
once the monetary authority sets the target and we have the amount, and I'm just going to use the amount, <coughs> excuse me, of $250 billion because that's the proper amount for the economy to uh, uh, have of new money in order to maintain price stability and allow for the growth of the economy, that that amount would come into existence through the government's budgeting process because that amount would really kind of kind of become a one-line revenue, you know, one line on the, on the revenue side, which is really going to be short that amount, okay? On the expense side, of the rev of the uh, budget is going to be everything that we're going to do and it's going to include anything that's going to happen with regard to that increase in the money supply so what's that increase in the money supply going to be used to it's going to be in the budget okay it's not going to be something that might happen if the banks decide to to uh this goes to the sanity of the present system pete are they going to maintain the huge excess reserves because they're getting interest on reserves, or are they going to lend it out into the money system, in which case we might have growth. And the insanity of the system that we have today, Pete, with the ability of the bankers to sit on the excess reserves and make money because we've decided to pay interest on, on, on reserves. No, none of that stuff is going to happen, Pete. All that stuff is going to be going out the door, and we're going to have the money absolutely created in the budgeting process, paid into existence by the government, getting deposited into the bank accounts of the citizenry and the corporations of the United States, the businesses of the United States of America, it's there. The job of creating the money is done, okay? So we've taken care of, of the part of, of uh, quote, ending the Fed, okay? Uh, you know, I use the term ending the Fed. You know, Ending the private fractional reserve debt money system of the United States of America, yes, because that's carried out through the Fed. That was instituted and legalized through the Federal Reserve Act. All of that will be undone by incorporating the functions of the Fed, the monetary functions of the Fed, uh, into the government, into the Treasury, you know, however it's going to actually be structured, you know, be determined by rational people uh you know making that decision but but that's how that part of it would happen pete so there are monetary and non-monetary functions of the fed would like uh, check clearing be a uh, something outside the monetary function of the fed and would that be picked up uh by the u.s treasury when many of say, many of the same employees would move over to the treasury and and uh, oh, I, the, 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 the assume, people with the expertise at the Fed could be retained in the new system, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, it's not that there's not a need for, you know, carrying out all the functions that the Fed, that the Fed carries out, okay? The difference is going to be the non-creation of the debt, okay? That's going to be the difference. By, by removing the debt, by removing that, the fractional reserve part of it, we are going to be allowing that the government will be creating the money through their budgeting process, through spending it into existence. And that, you know, when you come right down to it is, is you know, what we're nationalizing is the monetary system, Pete. We're, we're re-nationalizing the monetary system. The creation of money and the management of the monetary system is a proper function of government. Can't say that loud enough, Pete. Okay, it's a proper function. Of, it's not a proper function of private people doing anything and cre collecting the privilege that goes along with it, as we have talked about here, uh, you know, previously, and as have you have laid out in the in the the grandest of uh, free lunches. Um, so none of that stuff will happen. Will it will impart to the people of the United States the benefit of creating the money, Pete? That's that's what would happen. Joe, I want to take up what's going to happen to the banks after the reforms. We've talked about the Fed. Let's continue this in the next video. Okay.